now we've addressed that window, those those gutters, the downspouts, we move right. A couple things to note is you have a camera up on top. That's something that would have to be detached and reset during the siding install. And then to the right of it, you have another window screen. So when you take your elevation shot, you want to document one, two, three, four with the numbers of which window screens are damaged and write the words, window screens damaged. It'll help everyone at least identify how many are supposed to replace it where they're located, especially when it comes to production. Keep moving, moving right, there is no screen. If you don't see a screen and you see screens everywhere else, I always recommend asking the homeowner if the screen blew out or if there's a reason it's not there. Sometimes it got damaged and they just look really petty or bad, so they take it out. Make sure you take pictures of that. You keep moving right. Here again, you have another camera, detach and reset for a security camera. You have a light fixture, so it's detach and reset light fixture, detach and reset underneath it, the J block. Underneath here, you're gonna to wanna to document all these pictures showing where this stuff is located. The outlet, which is gonna be a detach and reset electrical outlet, and then they got detach and reset light block. We keep moving right. Now, a lot of times you'll find aluminum trim around, unlike this house, you'll find aluminum trim around the windows and doors. You're gonna to wanna to highlight any damages you find on it. When you look at a door or a window, some telltale signs that there's damage is at the bottom of the window uh, of the vinyl against the, or wood against the, uh, or cladding against the actual glass. You'll see divots and dents in here. Um, they would actually owe oh, to either reclad or replace the actual item. So if you have uh, Pella, Pella doesn't have replacement parts, you would have to replace the entire door. If you have Anderson, uh, fortunately for the homeowners, they have replacement parts and they would owe only for what's actually damaged as long as the parts are readily available or still available. We're gonna keep going right. A couple other things to note, like I'm already noticing some issues here. If you look at the table, the table has damage. Again, if you're doing this as a contractor, you're doing it to show that there was actually a storm here, but um, who's to say that the paint didn't get chipped off from a hailstorm? And these are some things that we're addressing right now that we'll have to put in on the back end supplement. There's about seven different places where I see the paint's already uh, pulling away. Um, again, it shows that there was an actual storm. It shows the severity of it. Same with the grill and the grill cover. Most grill covers sit in the sun and bake in sun and get exposed to the ultraviolet rays. You'll see spiral type of cracks in them or a, a chop right through them. That's stuff you want to document. Again, it's not because it's for you. It's really to do what's right for the homeowner, address all the damages that they have. But keep moving right. We're almost done with the salvation. Again, another screen. Screen right above, you want to document from further away, up close, further away, up close. Right here, you have another damage from hail on the actual siding. You're going to document where it's at, take a close up picture. And then you have so there's two different ways this is installed. A lot of times you'll see that the uh, uh, spigot, it's a faucet spigot, is installed in through the siding that's just got a hole that's actually attached to it. The carrier owes to detach and reset the uh, faucet spigot. Um, and sometimes there's actually a block behind it. They actually owe for that as well, if it's there. If it's not there, they don't owe for any improvements beyond what's currently existing. Something that's very, very important to address now is the air conditioning unit. Almost every unit that's exposed to the elements, such as this one, have damage to the coils, uh, to the fins, I'm sorry. Almost every unit that has exposed fins has damage to those. Now, could some of that be from, obviously, rocks or from a... Uh, uh, the lawnmower or something like that, absolutely. But if you look, it's got considerable divots in it. What I would recommend doing, I don't have my tape measure next to it, but I would put tape measure next to it to document how big the hail was against those fins. Um, I would document the type of air conditioner. This one's a York. And then the most important part is I would document on the back. Normally this label is visible, but the sun beat it to death and you can't see what it is. Um, Ideally, what we would want is the model number off of that. So you'd want a close-up of it. The carrier would have to pay for a uh, uh, comb and straighten of the AC condenser fins on that air conditioning unit. However, I can tell you just from, from first-hand knowledge that this unit is no longer made, um, and the parts may not be available for this unit. If the parts aren't available, at that point, they would have to pay for the entire unit to be replaced. Some units have some weird connections. I'm not an HVAC specialist. Uh, to the furnace and sometimes you have to replace both because of the way that they're connected together So this is something we would want an HVAC specialist to come out on But at the very least that they owe for on the front end is the damage that you see which is those fins 
all the other damage gets addressed later on once we actually have somebody come out and actually visually inspect it and, uh, that actually knows HVAC. And again, the final downspout, look for any type of damages we can find. Again, highlight it with a flashlight. Um, you can see there's hits all over the gutter or all over the downspout, I'm sorry. And something to note as well, sometimes you're going to see where there's paint actually chipped off. I want to make it a point, there's some gutters where the paint isn't baked on really well. And a lot of times adjusters will say, well, that's not hail because it's got, you know, the metal exposed. It must have been something sharp. Um, sometimes hail is sharp and I can show you documentation all that. And if there was a, a hole, like a, a dent in here and that paint was gone, that can be hail damage. It's just a matter of how the manufacturer put bakes on their coating on there if it was done correctly. Now we're going to move to the next elevation.